Okay, welcome to a lunchtime video. I'm really enjoying this series, so that means lunchtime videos. Um, so in the prior video, we uh, got, for the most part, all the way through part three of the learning path. Uh, we just got the, the summary of what we did in part three left, so that's perfect to start this video with. So the summary. Okay, great. So given a URL, we can count the words that are on the page. Um, so let me pull up my lab. Um, if you use a site without a massive amount of words, like realpython.com, the processing should happen fairly quickly. But what happens if the site has a lot of words, though? For example, try out uh, that site. You'll notice that this takes longer to process. Okay, so I'm, I actually I'm going to try that out before moving on. Um, so actually, I don't even need to uh, Yeah, I don't even, now this is really interesting here because I thought Heroku said that it took care of, um, of this, so I shouldn't get an invalid cert problem, but it looks like, um, it looks like Heroku actually didn't take care of this and I can't get there because I have a invalid cert. Let's try it without the. Yeah, so it looks like Heroku's having a problem here where it can't. Uh, yeah, I can't even get to my staging area either. So I don't know what's going on with Heroku. Maybe I gotta go www. Yeah, so unfortunately, I can't get to to there. Um, yeah, I can't get to any of my um, sites because of this message. Um, Okay, I'm going to try to access it differently. I'm going to do this Heroku open here from the CLI within my actual um, repo. Now I've got a I've got multiple apps to open, so I've got to pick the right one. I'm going to pick the production environments. Oh, and uh, in order to pick it, I have to do a, a switch here. Okay, so that command went through successfully. You should open it shortly here. Um, yep. Okay, so it did, oh, I see. So the reason it didn't work is the correct URL is herokuapp.com. Okay, so now that I put in the correct um, uh, URL, uh, we've got it working there. But I guess I don't understand. 
because it looks like the updates I did. Uh, aren't aren't there. So maybe I just never pushed. Yeah, I, I wonder if I if I didn't push. So let's do a get status. Uh, yep. So I've got a lot of extra things. It looks like I didn't I didn't push. Uh, and we'll say dash and of learning path part three. master oh it looks like i've got a lot of extra like this nlk data is is big um i might be able to do a git ignore on on some of these files and be able to get away with that but uh for now we're going to be good we're pushing it just up to my github and now we're going to push to, if I do a git remote uh, dash b, we're going to, uh, we're going to actually make it live. Uh, we're going to put it in the staging area uh, first. All right, and then after that, we'll use the Heroku promote command to put it in the um, the other the production. So that promote command, I think, was in part two. We learned about that, so we'll go back to that. All right, maybe it was in part one. Oh yeah, I think it was in part one. Part one. So if everything looks good in the staging area, we'll push it up to the production area. So, so far things do not look good in the staging area. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, because I did the, um, yeah, because I did that uh, push uh, or the modification to my requirements file, um, we've we've got this data, data classes version that's no longer available. Uh, it's probably too old of a version of a version to be available anymore, so uh, it failed out. So let's take out the specific. Uh, versioning requirement for data classes. And you know what? Data classes will probably just get installed by uh, some other uh, app. It's probably a dependency so, or, or some other libraries. Uh, libraries, if they are dependent on something, um, they will automatically install the things they're dependent on. So I'm just going to take this out completely. And then if there's a specific version or something, uh, hopefully that will automatically be installed. So uh, let's try this again. And unfortunately, as I said before, we've got a lot of files to push now. And I think they're all from that uh, kind of uh, uh, that uh, like word counting file. So uh, I'm going to pause it and be back shortly. All right, I'm back. It looks like we've got another problem here. Um, oh, it looks like we've still got data classes. 
in there somehow. I took it out, so I guess I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, you know what? I pushed my change after I took this out without ever committing the change. So, um, yeah, you can see I have it modified, but it's not uh, committed yet. So basically, I I did nothing to the actual code. I just I just did something in my Git repository. So we've got to move this change in so that it's actually live and being processed. All right, and I'll push it up to my Git repo just so that it's ready to go. And then I will push it to staging. And I might have to push it to main on staging because of that naming change um, that we wrote about. But uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, so we got another uh, pip freeze library that is causing issues. So by requirements, package resources. Uh, yep, that doesn't look right. So we'll get rid of that. push it up to my GitHub repo and then push it into my staging environment. Okay, so we might have a problem here. Um, we don't have, uh, but it looks like uh, everything went good. So let's see if the staging area is updated. It is, okay. And then we'll follow along with some of the examples here. So we'll add in this one. So we should see, so we should see pretty quick uh, processing. Yep, and then we only have 10 results, perfect. And now uh, if we follow this one, uh, we should see uh, longer processing, uh, but we should still have only 10 results.
And yeah, there we go. So everything looks good. I'm kind of curious what this actually looks like. Oh, okay, so it's like um, some kind of law or something for the current U.S. puppet regime to leave. So I don't know if this is uh, historical. It sounds like it's it sounds like it's more um, like I wonder from oh first of all there's not oh there is a lot of text okay. So, yeah, this is uh, interesting. Um, it sounds like it's more of like a historical uh, text uh, involved with like Canadian history. I wonder if uh, Real Python is based out of Canada. I'm curious enough to check, even though it's kind of a waste of time. I don't really need to know. Um, Uh, here we go. Meet the team. So, okay. Well, they're based out of Cleveland. and Okay, so they are a United States uh, company. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, yep, we see we got perfect results. Everything's looking good. Um, so let's go ahead and push it to uh, production. So the command for that is Heroku pipelines promote. And we're going to promote our remote staging environment because that looks good. So we want our production to look like that as well. So our customers can start using our, our latest uh, advancement. And there we go, production looks good. And the uh, really good thing is we know, since we did that testing in um, stage, uh, we already know that production is gonna be uh, working properly, um, just because I'll, I'll do it again. But um, that's kind of the beauty of, of staging is you don't have to go and test out uh, production necessarily because you already tested it in staging. So yep, that happened nice and quick. And then this took takes longer, but it's still successful. The most common word is index, it is uh, HTML. All right. If you have a number of users all hitting your site at once to get word counts, and some of them are trying to count larger pages, this can become a problem. Or perhaps you decide to change the functionality so that when a user inputs a URL, we recursively scrape the entire website and calculate word frequencies based on each individual page. With enough traffic, this will significantly slow down the site. What's the solution? Instead of counting the words after each user makes a request, we need to use a queue to process this in the back end, which is exactly where we will start next time in part four. For now, commit your code, but before you push it to Heroku, you should remove all language tokenizers. Okay, yeah, so this is why it's been taking so long for me, because I, I pushed all the tokenizers up, so that's just a lot of data and files I'm pushing around that I don't need to push. Except for the English along with the zip file. Ah, that too. Um, so we're only doing it in English, so we don't need the other ones. This will significantly reduce the size of the commit. Keep in mind, though, that if you do process a non-English site, it will only process English words. Push it up to the staging environment only, since this is new. Since this new text processing feature is half finished. Okay, so that's a good point. So I just pushed a something to the production environment that wasn't fully complete yet. So if we have a bunch of users using it in a certain way that we haven't built our code to handle yet. It's gonna bring the site down. So be really careful 
before you push things to prod that your features are complete tested and uh you're not setting prod up to fail all right so we're going to get rid of all of the tokenizers that aren't uh english so let's go to nlk data and then we're going to go to tokenizers and then pay you nkt punkt okay and then we'll do uh, ls pipe grep english okay and then we've also got inside of that uh, py3 So same thing, yeah, so uh, you know what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to copy this file, english.pickle, to uh, uh, English dot preserve, and you'll see uh, why I'm doing that uh, in a bit. Uh, I'm going to cut out the readme just to see if I want to keep this. Um, no, I think I'm going to get rid of the readme as well. So, okay, and then we're going to do, or actually, no, doing this strategy will will keep will preserve the readme. So we can see I've got English.preserve and then I've got uh, English.pickle as well here. Everything got pickle. So I'm going to go rm star dot pickle. So now I've got everything except English.preserve and the readme file. So now I can rename English.preserve back to English.pickle. There we go. And now I can delete English.preserve. And now I've cleared out all the files in that folder except for the readme file and the english.pickle file. All right, so let's do the same thing here. Uh, we're going to rename or we're going to copy the english.pickle file and uh, we're going to rename it to english.preserve. And then we're going to remove um, and we're not going to do a dash r because we don't want to remove the directory. Um, and we're going to do uh, star dot pickle. Okay. And then LS, we see all we've got now is our English app preserve, uh, our folder and uh, the readme file. So now we can copy English app preserve and then rename it back to English app pickle. And now remove English app preserve. There we go. And everything's Good to go. So let's uh, commit that. Our commits will be a lot faster now. So if I do a get status, you can see I deleted all these extra languages that we're not going to process on our site. So let's add those changes. And now let's commit those changes. Uh, do not process any language besides English. Okay, and then we'll push this up to uh, staging as well. And you'll notice uh, just how much faster it is. Yep, so we're already uh, building the source on the actual staging environment before we had to wait for all these files um, much, much faster now. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that will uh, be good. Um, so, uh, yeah, okay. So, yep, we're pushing it up to master. So we are now done with part three. Um, 
So, you know what? I think I'm going to stop the video just because that's the easiest way organizationally. Um, and then I'll start a new one for part four, but I will, I will uh, do a, a new one. Let's test out our staging environment first, just to make sure nothing went wrong. There we go. looks good. We'll choose the Gutenberg again. So we get a lot of processing. And there we go. So that's it for uh, part three of the tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you uh, very shortly in part four.